Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante with Peter Burson. We are live here at VMworld 2017. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Kevin Gray is here as the Director of Product Marketing for Hybrid Cloud Platforms at Dell EMC. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. Appreciate okay, so we're here talking cloud, everybody's cloud crazy, uh, but it seems like, as Peter said, the technology has matured. Yep. You know, and we're actually at a point where we can deliver what we've been talking about for the past five or six years. So how does that relate to what you guys have? What are you showing here at the event and what are customers saying? Yeah, what are the announcements? What's happening? So what's right? happening with the announcements? Well, one of the things we're announcing is enhancements to enterprise hybrid cloud. So if you look, you've heard a lot at VMware about VMware Cloud Foundation. Uh, we've added support for VxRack SDDC, which is our turnkey uh, VMware Cloud Foundation platform. Um, we've also um, enhanced support for VxRail, so we've added um, multi-site capabilities, so we now support up to four data center sites, and we've also added support for disaster, re disaster recovery through um, RecoverPoint VM. Um, we're also um, added support for na native hybrid cloud. So with native hybrid cloud, we now have a um, support for, um, um, new, we have new uh, support for, um, 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 we have a new um, turnkey platform for VxRail, um, and we're um, s supporting um, our new access testing tool, uh, which is um, really focused on helping developers. Right, so what the access testing tool does is it, um, it really focuses on uh, when companies are going through and um, really um, looking at uh, refactoring applications um, for things like, um, you know, when they're going to microservices, it has that ability to really go out and test to make sure the dependencies of services are still there. We also have a capability around called our app application deployment tool, which really pushes, or, uh, you know, when, as you look to push a um, application out to multiple instances or foundations uh, of um, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, he can actually um, help, um, it, it does that in one push. So if you look at uh, PCF, you can use a CF push command and push it out to multiple instances. And in this case, um, it'll do that in one step. Uh, so that's all the things that you've done on an individual announcement basis and the tools. Sure. But, but Kevin, let's, let's step back. Let's take the customer's perspective yeah. in a second. Uh, when you summarize all this, right. so you're standing in front of a customer and you're saying to the customer, we are pointing towards this vision. Right. We want you to be here with us. What is that here? What do you, where, where do you want them to be uh, as you start to think about designing and priority sure. for this broad portfolio that you have? So you heard Bob, Bill, Bob talk a little bit about sort of customers buying more outcomes, per se. And uh, one of the things you'll see is with, for instance, our native hybrid cloud, is that ability to really get a repeatable process with um, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So um, if you look at Pivotal Cloud Foundry, they're moving real fast, right? They have a release every 90 days, pretty much, and they, um, you know, you need to be on the latest release within nine months, and what... But, but let me stop you, let me make sure that I understand this. When you sure. say repeatable process for Pivotal Cloud Foundry, what you're talking about is that the organization, the shop, can think about developing an application in Pivotal, right. deploying it out on Cloud Foundry, and then running it on whatever underlying right. uh, hybrid uh, or uh, uh, converged infrastructure that they might want. And being able to do that over and over and over. Right. So they can increase their focus on the application function that they're generating. Is that basically what you mean? Absolutely. So it's that level of repeatability. Focus on the business problem, build it, and then take the pain and suffering out of deploying it wherever it needs to be. Absolutely, and maintaining it. So if we look at large customers, as I mentioned, one large financial institution was looking at how do they do this repeatedly across multiple data center sites, right? And how do they keep pace with that change over time, you know? That's not an easy process when you're moving really fast, and it's just one of those things where they tried to do it themselves for a while and realized it's better to buy that outcome than to try and, um, you know, create it on their own. 
You know, Dave, I was talking to a, a large user here on the show floor uh, not too long ago, uh, yesterday in fact, mm -hmm. about, uh, about the fact that DevOps is not taking the world by storm the way many people thought it might. And he identified specifically that one of the reasons is because there's not enough support from the technology companies to start packaging and organizing their capabilities, their technology set, their product sets, to support a DevOps mentality. Right. It almost sounds, and I, you haven't said this, Kevin, I don't want to yeah, put no, words no, in your right. mouth, but it almost sounds as if what you guys are saying is, we're going to start designing and packaging and organizing our systems to support that sort of DevOps orientation so the system administrators can evolve in the way that they need to evolve as the business demands new change. Yeah, so if you look at our hybrid cloud, platforms, they're really intended to be that easy button for you know, deploying either you know, a full vRealize suite, vRealize suite stack in, in, the, in our enterprise hybrid cloud or Pivotal Cloud Foundry for native hybrid cloud. Um, another thing we introduced this week was our ready systems. But we have ready systems for VMware and we have ready systems for Pivotal. If you look at the VMware ready system, one of the things we found for, for VMware, uh, one of the things we found was that many customers you know, if you look at enterprise hybrid cloud, it, it gives you a lot of benefits that, um, you know, a lot of our large enterprise customers are looking for. So, it supports multiple sites, it supports disaster protection, but, and it supports a turnkey platform where, you know, it's an engineered system. But for a lot of customers, it meant that you were always a couple of releases behind. You know, so um, we, we give them that experience, right? Um, and we make it a little bit, more, we give them an opportunity with the Ready system to get that support from VMware, where we'll take on the HCI piece and support it. Same thing with, na with uh, native hybrid cloud in our Pivotal Cloud Foundry Ready system, or Pivotal Ready system. You know, they'll get their support from, uh, for PCF from um, Pivotal, but they'll build it on HCI. And we're also introducing uh, a Pivotal Ready system based on PKS. And I think PKS is interesting simply because if you look at the Kubernetes environment and the work that's been done with Kubo, um, it's really a platform that's more, more likely where people are going to want to build, right? If you look at those people that are doing it, they want more control over you know, their build process and their pipeline, and therefore they're more likely to build. And with um, the PKS system, I think you know, a ready system based on Pivotal, uh, Pivotal Ready System, uh, they can get that outcome. So at the end of the day, it's all about changing the operating model. Absolutely. And, and having a business impact. Peter, you, we were in our Palo Alto studio and one of our, our, our clients was in, very prominent end user or end, uh, end, end market practitioner, saying if you can't change the operating model, you know, you might get a little bit of uh, business benefit, but you're never, if you're a large company, you're never going to take a billion dollars of cost out. So my question is, what are you guys seeing, are you being able to affect the operating model, and can you share any sort of your favorite examples, or even generic sort of proof points? Sure, absolutely. We had one customer, CICC, um, they're a large HR outsourcer in China, and uh, they were able to, by implementing Enterprise Hybrid Cloud, they were able to accelerate the time it took to get new application services by uh, 60%. This is simply a means of taking IT out of the middle and really being able to accelerate the delivery of IT services. Or taking services. certain tasks exactly. that IT performs. It's not yeah. necessarily taking IT out, it's taking those low value tasks out, right? Absolutely, and you know, self-service portal pieces, sure. exactly, so. And then maybe automated. redeploying those resources absolutely. to higher value activities. Absolutely, right. Okay. So those are the types of outcomes. We also see, if you look at Pivotal and some of the capabilities they have, you know, we, if you look at sort of traditional IT infrastructure, we see many customers moving to you know, daily, weekly releases as opposed to, if you think of a traditional model, um, you would, you know, it'd be a much longer process. So that's the type of outcome we see as well. Well, one of the things you've been saying for years, I think Benioff stole it from you, is there's way, going to be way more SaaS companies coming out of, out of non-tech companies than yeah. tech companies, to your point. Everybody's now a software company, right. and they're releasing code on a constant basis, and they're, but they're not technology companies, right. Right. so right. they need help. Right. Yeah, exactly. he, he might not have stolen it from me, but it's <laughs> nice, a nice validation point, and I think we said it Just before kidding, he Mark. did. Just kidding, Mark. All right, Kevin, hey, thanks very much well, for coming to theCUBE. So really appreciate having you. Appreciate it, thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. It's theCUBE, we're live from Las Vegas, Mandalay Bay, day three, VMworld 2017. We'll be right back. Thank you.